guys, I'm your host Lisa and you're watching Creative Adventures with Made by Lisa Marie. The goal of this video series is to educate viewers on practical ways that you can harness your artistic abilities and inspire you to push into your full creative potential. Are you ready? Hey guys, welcome to Creative Adventures with Made by Lisa Marie. Each episode we'll be bouncing back and forth between doing an in-studio teaching lesson, like today, and teaching you tips and techniques in plein air painting. So without further ado, let's get started on our first episode. For our first project, we'll be learning how to paint this floral wreath design that I created simply using a pattern that I made up. So before we get into painting, let me go over quickly the list of supplies we'll be using today. So to start off with, we'll be using the Lucas Aquarel pan set. So now I have the 150 year anniversary box set edition, but um, there are also other types of smaller pan sets that you can use as well. I personally like the pans because they don't dry out, but obviously the tubes are also great. It's all about preference, but um, my preference is the pan set. For the watercolor paper, we'll actually be using watercolor blocks. This is the Fabriano 140 pound hot press watercolor blocks, which are fantastic. I love these things. We also have some Statler mechanical pencils and a Vanish eraser. So to start off with, we'll be using some specific colors. So we'll have opaque white, permanent orange, sap green, Payne's gray, magenta, and cobalt blue. So we'll get our pan set and some water. This is just kind of the basic setup that I like to work with. We'll take our pencil and sketch a circle. The so circle doesn't need to be particularly large, maybe just about a six inch diameter. Okay. So as you can see here, there's the diameter, or there's the circle. <laughs> and then within the circle, we want to kind of mark a little X where we'll be putting these bigger flowers in. So there's seven flowers, and we want to space them evenly around the circle. So put some at the top, diagonally, Another one, and again, we're working lightly. Um, if we make any mistakes or need to move something around, that's what the eraser's for. So let's see, make sure I have seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yep. Past first grade math. Um, all right, so we'll open this eraser up now. And this thing's really nice because um, it actually, when you erase, it just creates one long um, eraser residue, if you will. <laughs> so it's, it's not a messy one. You can just kind of scoop it all up in one, which is really nice. So I'm just gonna move this X over a little bit. Okay, so now that I have kind of a map of where I'll be placing these first big pink flowers, which is the flower that I'll be starting with, the first pink flowers are just magenta, so we'll keep this nice and easy. We won't be mixing anything. We want to dip our brush into the water and just take a little bit of the pigment out, put some on our pan. Okay, so that we have enough to go back and dip into this. Um, and I want, I want there to be um, a nice ratio between the water and pigment where um, the pigment's not too overpowering, um, but it's also not see-through. So we can practice making marks on the right side of our paper. If you're not comfortable or familiar with working in watercolor, then you can play around on this right side and, and get comfortable with it. You can see if you have more pigment and less water, it's going to be a lot darker 
and if you have a lot of water and less pigment your pink is going to be very light so I actually I just want somewhere right in the middle of this once you're familiar and get comfortable with that we're going to start painting the pink flowers so again I'm actually going to start erasing some of this circle so that we don't see it um, in the painting Okay. But we still want to keep those X's and make sure they're nice and light. So even if you drew an X on kind of dark, you can erase it a little bit. I like to just start with the top X, the top left X. So I'm going to actually erase that X, but I, I remember where it is exactly. And this is where I'm going to begin my first flower. So to begin the flower design, we just want to paint the little middle of the flower. So I really, it's almost like similar to a Mickey Mouse head or something where there's these three little circles all um, entangled into one. And so once we get that going, we're gonna kind of, um, well, something important, we wanna leave white space all around our shapes. We don't want them to be touching at all. That's part of this pattern that I made up. So I'll kind of outline just a hair, just a touch above where this first shape was. And I'll do the same thing. I'll, I'll outline it and then I'll draw in these little circles. And these are gonna be the inside petals. So again, we'll outline, outline, and then we'll do two circles again. And then one more outline, circle, circle. And something that I like about plants is that since they are very nature-based, no two flowers are the same, it's really hard to mess this type of thing up because they can all have their own unique shape. They don't have to be symmetrical or perfect by any means. Um, I'm actually my uh, pigment was a little bit light so I'm going in and I'm adding some more color to it while the paint's still wet. If you want it darker this is a good time to add some some more paint to it. Now for the third layer of flowers we're going to repeat the same pattern of outlining as if there's an imaginary white line that's all the way around what we just painted on the layer before and now we're going to have three circles coming into this line. So we'll add that and we'll just continue to work our way all around the flower, making the lines slightly longer so that they can fit the three circles. And again, you kind of want to make sure that the, your pigment to water ratio on your brush is still pretty even to what you're working with for all of the petal layers. And this, is, this exercise really is just about getting comfortable with watercolors and working with watercolors, con moving them across the page, controlling the pigment. Yeah, so this is something just to really have fun with. And like I said, if your um, flower doesn't come out perfectly, like here actually, I'm, I have a little bit of space that is unused. I'm just going to add another little petal right there to kind of complete that circle. So this is what we'll be doing six more times around the circle. And that's, that will be kind of like our, the bones to this wreath. Once you're done with that, it should look something like this. Okay. So now we'll get into the second pink flower, which is slightly smaller. It's going to be this smaller flower, which also has some tones of 
orange and white. As you can see, I was mixing the colors, trying to get that um, right pigment. But so I'll, I'll show you how to mix this color. So we're going to take the magenta again, a little bit of the opaque white, and the permanent orange to it. Okay, so we're gonna take our magenta, make sure we've got enough in the palette there. This is where our paper towel comes in handy. Clean the brush off a little bit and then we'll mix in some of this opaque white. Some water. Um, it's okay if your watercolor pans get a little bit messy. We can always clean those off afterwards. But we just wanna, we wanna lighten this down a little bit until we see more of that uh, medium hue color. And then after that, we're gonna add just a touch of the permanent orange, and this will really warm it up and also um, just kind of distinguish the color a little bit more. So let's see. I think I wanna still lighten this up even more. Oops, make sure that doesn't fall off. There we go. So again, you can just play around with it and check over here if you're liking the color, thinking that's starting to get close to what I want to do. Okay, and we'll add a little bit more orange to this. Kind of almost gives it like a peachy tone. There you go, that's pretty good. Okay, we'll be doing kind of a similar organic squiggly line as before. So we'll start with this main flower again. And basically what we wanna do is pick a place kind of near the flower and we'll make a little bit of a squiggly line that's maybe about the same size as one of the inner petals as far as length goes. And we're just gonna kind of make up these organic little squiggly lines around it and those will serve as the petals and so again we're just going to kind of go around and space out these smaller flowers and put them around the bigger flower and we'll we'll put probably three or four um, of these in each segment again this is supposed to feel very organic natural um, like a bouquet of flowers or a floral wreath so I'm not too concerned about symmetry here or everything being exactly the same as I actually, I want there to be some variations in it because it's supposed to be a plant. So don't be afraid to just play with it a little bit. And so we'll, we'll keep going around and I will just finish off the rest of these. <laughs> Once you're finished painting the smaller flowers, it should look a little something like this, where the flowers are evenly dispersed throughout the circle. So now we're going to move into painting the leaves. So this is where we'll take our sap green and a touch of the cobalt blue, and we'll, we'll mix this together quickly. Um, it's mostly sap green, but like I said, we'll just do a little, little touch of the blue just to cool the color down a little bit. So again, we'll get in there, mix, mix some of our green onto the palette and then just a touch of the blue, mix that in. It gives us a nice leafy color. So, and for this, we're gonna make um, like a teardrop shape for the leaves. And basically, we're gonna mimic like a vine is going all the way around in a circle through the wreath. But we'll also have different leaves coming out, just like how a real wreath of flowers would look. So we'll start with this vine pattern, which is basically just drawing the outline of a teardrop and then filling it in with this green. It's almost going to look like a braid where about halfway down on the other, on the left hand side of the first leaf, we'll draw another leaf and paint that in. 
And then again, we'll go back to the right hand side and about where the first leaf ends, we'll give it a little space and paint in at the third leaf like so. <clears throat> and we want to make sure it's curving down. So now I'm going to really angle this one down so that it'll eventually end up meeting through this center of the big flower. And we will continue painting that down like so. More pigment. And so once we have this initial vine finished, we'll end up adding in more leaves just around all the flowers and making a, this a nice green wreath. Okay. And if you get to the end here, like um, I am, and there's a little bit of a cutoff, we want to um, still act like we're going to put in a leaf and then chop it off right where it's about to meet the petals, but still leave that nice white line. So something important about this pattern is that there's always these, this like almost imaginary white line around all of the surrounding pieces of the painting. So I'll show you kind of how I'll decoratively use the leaves around the bigger flowers. So again, we're just gonna paint in some leaves and we still have one more flower element to go after this. So we can leave a little bit of room like if I wanna have the other flower coming out of here, I'll leave that one blank for now, or leave that space white for now. Be careful to not put my hand in the, the wet paint. <laughs> um, so we'll add a leaf here, maybe another one kind of coming out. So again, this is something, just trust your eye, play around with it, you can, Add as many leaves as you would like, or as little leaves as you would like. Put one coming out here. This is really just something for you to practice. Um, practice using watercolors, practice trusting your eye, kind of making everything feel balanced. And so, yeah, we'll just, we'll continue doing this until we've gone all the way around the circle. So once we have all the leaves painted in, it should look a little something like this. And feel free to add more leaves if you need them or just continue working with your composition. But this should be kind of the bones to what the, the leaves in the vine look like. So for the last portion, we're gonna go over how to make these smaller light blue gray flowers. So we'll take out our paint again and we'll clean off our brush Grab the Payne's Gray. Again, take some water, mix it in there, pull the pigment out. And once we have some Payne's Gray in there, we're going to take our white, which mine is actually full of pink paint, so let me clean that off real quick. Now, if, you're, if your pans are messy or whatever, all you have to do is dip your paper towel like so in the water and just wipe it right off. It'll clean it off nice and quickly. Very easy. Okay, so position that again, clean off, whoops, our brush. Okay, so now we'll take that clean white and mix it into our Payne's Gray. And again, these flowers are very light, um, so we want to be working with a lot of white in this one. Um, not so much white that you can't see it, but they should still be more of like an accent flower. So again, we'll go over here and check our pigment color. So that's looking pretty good there. I'm happy with that. And now we'll go in and start painting the pattern. And basically these are not as squiggly as the small pink flowers, but these are gonna be more of like little dots, kind of like a long V or something. And so we'll be working around our wreath and going in and adding 
these little stacks of dots. And just kind of anywhere that there's a little bit of a space, we're gonna tuck these in between so that it looks like a nice full wreath. And again, we'll just be adding these alongside anywhere you really see fit. So, and this is just giving us that nice dimension. We want to fill up any holes that are left within our pattern. And again, if you're if you finish this and you still have some spots that maybe need another small pink flower or some more leaves or any of this, you can always go back and rework them in. But this is really just the basis of the pattern. So again, hopefully this is getting you more comfortable with learning how to work with these paints, how to come up with a composition and really get comfortable with mixing the paints and putting them on paper. And then I think it, it should be finished. I'm pretty happy with it. So I'm gonna add, let's see, maybe a pink flower right up there and one, sneak one in there just to kind of help round things out. And then we should be good to go. I don't want to overdo it. That's something that's easy to do, but I am going to add one more here. Okay. Yeah, so like I said, you can keep working with this, keep playing with this, keep adding more layers or whatnot, but basically work it until it feels right. And this is, um, your final composition should look a little something like this. Thanks so much for joining me in our in-studio teaching lesson. Next month will be our first plain air painting session where you'll be joining me in the Colorado Rocky Mountains where I'll be painting outdoors and teaching you some techniques and tips. I encourage you to try this at home, rewind the video, rewatch it, whatever you need to do to follow along. And then once you're done finishing this painting, I actually want you to post your version in the comment section and I'll be taking a look at this and giving you feedback, as well as post any comments, questions, concerns that you have. In the meantime, make sure to follow me on Instagram and Facebook to see more of what I do on a day-to-day -day basis and the different projects that I'm currently working on. Again, thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you had fun. Can't wait to see what you made. We'll see you next time.